Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be looking at a game, uh, a few games of Jacob Lovey. Yep. So you're from New York, right, Jacob, right? Yep, Brooklyn. Uh, okay, isn't that where Bobby Fisher was from? Yes, sir. Bobby Fisher was like an obsession of mine when I was a kid, right? I was obsessed <laughs> about the idea that he'd gone into seclusion. He got into hiding. <laughs> Do you know what year he was born in? Not sure, but things didn't really turn out that good for him. He was actually born in, I think he was born in 1943. So it was like two years before the uh, World War Two ended. Yeah, well, they did they did, and they didn't, yeah. So he became world chess champion. So Hans Niemann is also, do you think Hans Niemann has got a chance of becoming world chess champion? I spoke to one of my friends who is a really strong player. He said mm. he doesn't think he's going to even come top ten. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Anyway, so these game, you? these games, Jacob. Know. Where were they from? Where did you play them? On chess.com. So you play these games on chess.com, and which? Who are you in this? You're you're Gav um, Nojed. Um, Yankee six thirteen. Are you you're, you're Yankee six thirteen. So yeah, why? So you can flip, you can flip the. Okay, we'll flip board. the board, right? Okay, so we're going to look for your annotations, and I'm going to basically critique your annotations. Yeah. Okay. I just start to annotate, so like I don't really mm. know what I'm doing, but I thought that was a weird first move. Whatever. Yeah, I think this is called the Polish opening or the orangutan opening. So the orangutan is uh, obviously that's a primate that lives in places like Borneo, and its uh, forest areas get destructed, uh, you know, destroyed for uh, to you know harvest soya beans and stuff like that. So whenever you order a soya coffee, you're killing an orangutan. Sure. And uh, you know a good line against this actually, Jacob is uh, it's recommended a book that I once read is C six. When they go here, you go Queen B six. Now there is a trap here. When you defend a pawn after A five at a C four, let me just hide it. So I'm going to test your disposition. If I take here, what it, does White have a trick here in this position? Does White have a trick here? In this mm. Well, well, I, actually, I'll show you the first move, right? C five. So, what is the trap? If I take here, why is that a bad idea? Why? Why is that? A bad oh, idea? because he wins your rook. Exactly, he wins a rook. So this is actually a little little openings trap. Oh, oh. That's cool. Yeah, I don't really know much theory. I don't know any theory at all. I just play by mm. ear, but I usually do like the like the fin kettle right. setups, like similar to like Kings Indian stuff. Yeah, so if you can get away with it, you'll play a fee in chat opening. So would you describe yourself as a naturally talented chess player or, or not? Probably not. Right. So w what are you <laughs> best at? at? like two, hmm. 270 ELO. So in the whole world, what are you best at outside of chess? What, what would you describe as your strength? Probably wrestling. Wrestling, like, really? Style wrestling, yeah. Uh, how much do you weigh? I'm like, right now, like 200 on the dot. Really? How tall are you? I'm like 6'2". So you're quite a big guy, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't... If I ever got into a bar fight, you'd be kind of somebody I'd want on my side rather than... I, I, listen, yeah. for a bar fight, I wouldn't recommend wrestling because there's a bunch yeah. of people punching. I would call somebody that knows striking. That knows like boxing or something. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you like, because there's always this debate about would a heavyweight boxer beat somebody like a, a UFC fighter, and the theory is that a heavyweight boxer could possibly win if they get to strike first. But if the UFC fighter gets them on the floor, then really the boxer's got yeah, no it, chance. It, it really depends. But in bar fights, there's mm. usually like multiple people, so you you don't really know how it's gonna go. Yeah, I don't know how we got onto that subject anyway, but. <laughs> Okay, so G6, interesting move. Um, now, I do remember uh, we were talking about uh, Bobby Fischer, and Anatom Karpov was of that era. And I remember, so a lot of the uh, where you get the strength from, Jacob, I think, is memory, you know? Like, how you become a grandmaster, or you have become a master-level player, is really memory, and memorising a lot of different games. And I remember this old book of Karpov's, and he mentioned this game where he played something like this as white. So up up to that, I'm like Karpov? No, I'm not Karpov, I'm whatever, whoever faced him. But I think, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think Cockle was white in this game. It might have been against Allman. It was something like San Antonio in Texas, 19, uh, 1975 or 1976. And that looks worse for Cockle. Cockle was white. So you think White's yeah, no, worse? Yeah, because like he's going to mm. have a killer bishop the whole game. I think Carpel won a like a brilliant positional game because the yeah. knight came here and then it basically you're controlling this square. So oh. essentially the bishops are slightly blunted here. So White's already clearly better in this kind of position. But with a pawn on B4, that obviously wouldn't play quite as well because, uh, well, for one thing, that pawn would be hanging on B4. So you wouldn't be able to play... Uh, so this is why I think B3 is a slightly better move than B4, you know, because you wouldn't be able to play the whole line because B4 would be hanging at the end. So anyway, I'm digressing. Let's let's have a look at your annotations. So you said you should have gone E6. Uh, what move did I say that? Because I don't remember. That was on move two. You, you said you ago. should have gone E6, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I thought, like, whatever, I get an extra move and he's pretty much forced to protect the pawn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you're right. What I would say instead of so you're giving like text annotations. Oh, what, I should have done the move annotations. Exactly, because yeah. I I find with amateur players there's too much text and uh, not enough actual variations. I think the difference between I would say one of the biggest differences between a professional player and an amateur player is that professional players generally is just all variations, right? I think in my second game I have move variations. But, oh, good. Yeah. But the, I looked at the engine after and like the engine falsified it. Right, okay. So we'll have a look at that a little bit later. But, but yeah, also I'm questioning the gra grammar here because there should be an apostrophe between the... Listen, it's okay. V and it's later <laughs> <night>. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm very critical mistakes. about... I'm slapped when it comes to annotation. I don't yeah, really care. Yeah, D6 is, uh, looks okay. And then E5. This looks... Uh, so how would you assess this position? How would I assess Jacob. this position? Yeah. Um, listen, black has good control of the hmm. center. Um, right. I was like, no, no pieces have been traded. Yeah. Um, the I think the white's uh, black's bishop hasn't really developed, but yeah, black, but white's bishop is really really passive. Right. Is that a good enough of an assessment? Because there's not that much. Well, normally, uh, the normally thing is, you, you're adding you're you're adding a lot of uh, which is great. You're adding a lot of description, but what I would just say is sometimes is is better. Like simple is best. So sometimes it's better just to say white is better, black is better. Who do you think is better? Well, black is better. Black is better. You think black is better? Yeah. I would say that the position is about equal, but again, that might be a misassessment. No, but I'm saying because like I I have control of the center. That's the only reason. Right. Why. I I mean we could come back to this and check. But, but check. They're but. ahead in development, so. Also. Yeah, I would say it's a roughly equal. I mean, it, oh, seem, yeah. it seems to be still be inferior as well, right? Which is interesting. Uh, there's, there's quite a few games actually played in this line. You went B6, which is uh, has never been played before. Listen, I'm an innovator, man. It's it's an interesting move. So it's very clear what you want to do. And I put a bishop on B7. Knight okay. uh, C3. So again, like if you think you're better, what I would suggest. Uh, Jacob is basically putting that annotation. Now we can't. I can't put in annotations to your games for some reason, but unless I, I can I open. Should I open it as a study, or is that not a good idea? Whatever you want to do. Okay, know. so I'll open it as a study. I still, for some reason, I can't put in uh, annotations. Oh, so you're saying when I when I think I'm better, I should annotate that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, sh you should. Noted. You should put that in as, uh, you know, I equal, slightly better, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's go back. Let's see some of your annotations. So that's really what I'm all about. So E4. So how did you feel when they played E4? Um, I don't really remember how I felt, but... Mm. Uh. Well, let's say you played this in a classical game now. I'm playing you. How would you feel after I played a move E4? How would you feel about your position? 
And do you think it's actually a good move? Do you think it's a good move? Um, I don't know. You're blocking out my bishop. I don't really like it. Yeah, it's probably a reasonable move, right? I mean, it, it is, you know, the other option, I guess, is for white to play d4. But he decided to play e4. Well, we don't know I if I think he's... That's, that's when mm. I went uh, c... C6. Yeah, I would say that's a good move. Oh, yeah, so, again, if I was annotating this game, I would I would give it as an exclamation mark, right? Uh, bishop C1. What, his move? No, your move, C6. I quite like that move. I think that's yeah. a good move because you, you, you've, you're you playing with a plan, which I like. So you play, you, you're intending to play D5. Uh, bishop C1, then you play D5, which again, I'd probably give that as an exclamation mark. So you've got now. I would say, like, how would you assess the position now? Um, I'm saying I've I'm a nice knight, nice bishop. Mm. Um, I'm looking at like things to attack his knight and attack his rook at the same time. Right. We trade knights, so I'd say black is better. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Uh, actually, I'd, I this one I'd probably agree with. I think black is better. Obviously, he's quite dynamic. Uh. But his move knight e4 makes some sense because he's intending to come into d6, right? Uh, so maybe that's a good move. So you went, you could have maybe gone queen e7 as an alternative, just because ideally I want to play. At, so in, in this position, the way I'd approach it, Jacob, is I want to play knight c3, but obviously the knight is blocking that square. Now I don't want to play him slowly like rook c8 because then the knight would jump in, and then I'd be in trouble. So I would maybe consider a move queen e7 because that threatens f5. And when the knight moves, then knight c3. And then I do, and now I'm noticing after f5, there's a knight c3 later. There's a queen b3 check, actually. So it's, it's not as simple as I, I thought. But you went knight f6. That does run into a pin. But then you escape the pin. And then you decided to take. And you went knight f4. And you're saying, was trying to bait him into taking. So my rook and bishop open up. It was probably a bad move. But he doesn't have to take. Well, you said Becky doesn't have to take. But yeah, because 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 he doesn't have to take. Right, a bet a, a better move is Knight F six. Right, that's interesting. Yeah, but you're saying he doesn't have to take here. Yeah, and like mm. just kick it out. So again, I would I would rather than put in text. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record here, but that's that's my no, job, no, right? I, listen, I. I've never. Yeah. These are my first three annotated games. Like, exactly. So we're considering we're... this your first annotated games, is you're doing a really good job, right? Uh, so what about the move? So you were saying he doesn't have to take. What other option does he have? Um, bishop c four. Okay, so you're saying bishop c four, right? And what happens if I just take the pawn? Uh, then he takes with bishop. Well, he takes this one. No, 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 no. Um, he takes um, over there on F6. On F7, I mean. But if I take that? Oh, I didn't even see that. No, no, I'm because. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and why was it? No, why no, was no, it? I, I had that pattern in because he does something like that later on in the game. But Ah, oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but whatever. We're, like, I don't know. I just didn't like that move after I did it. In the moment, like, I didn't really think about it. So uh, maybe he could thing. maybe he could do this, right? He could do something like this, possibly. That's, is one that's, one idea, right? That's almost what happened, but not really. Yeah, yeah. So maybe another option is uh, instead of maybe also Queen G four was possible instead of. Uh, no, but I looked at the engine afterwards, and it said it was a fine move. What I did, I think. Yeah. I so, think the engine liked what I did. Yeah, yeah. So okay, exactly. So my my job is irrelevant, right? You you've already destroyed my job. No, but I'm saying you're able... Like, I don't understand the engine, really. So yeah, exactly. Different than exactly. having a human. Okay, so Queen G4. Which is a dumb move. Dumb move. So yeah, that happened. looks slightly weird, actually. I, would, I, I thought I had some scary things. I didn't have anything at all. Maybe Queen dumb. E7 seems more sensible, right? Just covering... Sometimes... You know, one of the things I noticed of amateur players, Jacob, is that there's always a feeling that you need to do something, right? Where it's like... Uh, stronger players, you know, you take Magnus, obviously that's an extreme example, but he's extremely patient, right? Like, he will just play the position, um, 
you know, just try to find the best move on every every move, and he he won't go for too much. So he probably think, yeah, that's the move you want to play, ideally. But there's there might be a problem with it. Yeah. So bishop c4, which is a good move by White. And uh, yeah, now you're forced to because if yeah, if you had this position, well, you got other options after bishop c4. Maybe even queen c7 was maybe better, right? Because now, if, again, if they go here, you could potentially take with a rook on e4. But they went, you went queen g4, which looks slightly dubious, I must admit. So, how would you assess this position now? You could also take with a queen, right, or a rook. How would you assess this position after e takes? Um, I, I think it's equal. Why do you think it's equal? Because even though they have a passed pawn. It's mm. still, it's like isolated, it's very weak. I'm yeah, saying yeah. he has his pass, pass of knight against my really active bishop. Mm. So, yeah, I'd probably go... And, and then I also have that weak, yeah. weak pawn. I don't mind the fact that your f-pawns are doubled, so I think it takes yeah, away some kind of... I know, I know, I know. I, I would say maybe slight edge for white. Maybe even here they shouldn't take with a pawn. Maybe they should take with a queen or take with a rook. Uh... Yeah. Uh, maybe queen takes was was better because you hit the rook and then you know you can always go rookie one and he yeah okay i mean it's he, i agree with you if there is an advantage for white it's not certainly not a big one i wouldn't have thought knight d4 interesting move so yeah, this, is, this is where it goes downhill I, i'm pretty much forced to take yeah you have to take exactly which i didn't like because his bit his his knight was like pretty bad so what you're saying is going downhill but i mean weren't your moves for so basically weren't you, weren't you clearly worse then uh, in this position unless you had something better than a rook d8 right yeah but i think it, it it was a draw but like i don't know i blundered like later ah, okay okay let's have a look so you yeah took... it was really sloppy after this oh man you're gonna see could you could you like not take maybe could you not take I mean, let's say you just played a move like this. How bad? How bad is this position? Okay, they're obviously going to play knight c6, but then you just—I don't know—you just move a rook or something like rook e8. How bad is this position? Because it feels like you—you you know, like you were saying earlier, the bishop was really good, and then you just allowed it to be exchanged. It I'm, covers a lot of squares, but like I, mm. I don't really have a plan for it, honestly. And the knight—the mm. knight is actually really good right now. Okay, interesting, right? But you took, uh, and then you went here, which, uh, to be honest, this looks worse for black, but probably holdable, right? And then, uh, so you said, instead of rookie 7, g5 is better. Was g5 a move that you thought of, or the computer thought of? Um, I thought of. Yeah, because it defends the pawn, right? I thought of after. Okay, so rookie 7, and then they... Well, you like g5, though? Yeah, because I think you're right. This is some kind of blunder because you're just losing a pawn, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like not thinking at all. But okay, after rook f4, uh, so actually go back to this position. So you went rook e7. Uh, queen c4. Yeah, because your rook is actually better on d7 than it is on e7, maybe. Because on, on d7 it attacks the pawn, so it kind of, you know, forces white to be very creative to make progress. Because if they can't push the pawn, or what are they going to do? You know, sometimes you just wait in chess. So, like, you, you're right. Well, I'm, I mean, very, I'm very impatient. That's what causes a lot of my blunders. Like, I try to look for yeah, things even yeah. though there's, there's nothing there. So maybe you should try, like, meditation or something, yeah? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just sort of. Like... I actually have before. I have. Oh, that's good. Yeah. How did you get on with it? Uh, it was boring. No, I'm kidding. No. Um, mm. No, it was okay. I don't really see any benefits from it. Actually, I found when I used to do meditation, I used to do. It, I stopped doing it. Uh, but uh, with meditation, I found it did improve my concentration levels. I should have probably carried on with it. But the reason I stopped was because. Uh, I think it can lead to panic attacks as well, like weirdly, like meditate. Even if it's supposed to calm you down, it can also lead to kind of like, uh, there was like some story I heard about this guy who started doing like all this, got into all this Asian meditation. 
like and then he ended up having a breakdown and killed himself because it opens up your mind right and that could be a bad thing as well anyway i'm going off on a tangent as i always do right so it still looks I defend go that that's a bad move that's such a bad move oh uh, what could you have done instead i don't know uh, you're right but like i don't know i just don't like my position right now no it's gone a bit wrong right because now you're pawned down and they've got this it's one of the things i noticed jacob is uh when I played, um, you know, good players, they've often used this. This I think this whole idea of having a like a strong pass deep pawn is like a Soviet kind of invention, really. Because a lot of good positional players, like someone like Vladimir Kramnik, would often use this kind of device to really tie your pieces down, and they're just very, very good at using uh, that deep pawn. I've lost, I've lost a few games over the years uh, against this like really powerful deep pawn idea. So. Uh, now you've lost a pawn. Yeah, I kind of fear for you here. Maybe it's still defendable, but it's clearly very unpleasant. Um, yeah, and look, you're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's a blitz game, right? I mean, how much time did you have at this point? Uh, I'm not sure, but this is this is a rapid game on Chess.com. But kind of blitz, right? I mean, how, what was the time control you used? It was it was fifteen ten. And how much time, so roughly, how much time did you use for that game? Um, I could check. Give me one second. Sure. I have to go back to my games. Sorry. That's all right. All right. Let me see. I had like six minutes left. Yes, yeah, so it was a big blunder. Yeah, so so maybe at some point you lost concentration. Yeah, like, I, I was already like tilted. Yeah, it, it becomes emotional because you realize you're worse and you're suffering. And, you know, I was reading this book actually. It's quite a good book actually. It's by uh, David Howell and Magnus Carlsen. And they talk about how you, is, you grind opponents down. And Magnus at some point, they're having this conversation. So the the... You know, the book is like a conversational style. At some point in having this conversation, and he's saying, you know, what do you do when you're suffering in an endgame? Do you play intuitively? And he says, no, you, you just keep cat playing. But I think with most players, and I know that from personal experience, uh, emotions take over. Yeah, I, I was so, like, stuck on the idea of getting mm. my, my king to e, uh, e5. Right. Like, I, I don't even know what I was thinking yeah because you start thinking about like general factors and you forget about concrete tactics right yeah. so maybe a move like h5 was maybe was obviously any move other than f6 would have been better right yeah like you know even rook d5 was better than f6 but yeah here and then it's still not easy for them to win because if they push the pawn uh, I guess you're just going to come back and take the pawn right so I, I don't know I have an issue like Hmm. Uh, even if you look at my games, I don't have a lot of draws. Like I feel like I I yeah. try a little bit too hard to to like get out of drawn positions and whatever. Hmm. I usually never take the draw. Yeah, so maybe that's a thing. You need to start becoming more results orientated and, and just say that sometimes, like a saved draw, you know, like a half point, that's just as important as a win, right? Because it's a great save, you know like uh okay so should we, should we what should uh what we should do maybe i'll analyze that game uh with uh okay with open study and then but i think uh how do we i can't analyze that with a computer but what i could do is i could go into the game itself and then so earlier for example in this position uh, what was it around about here? You said that black was better. Yeah. Uh, but the engine says, yeah, it kind of agrees. No, it says it's equal more yeah, or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minus point one. Mm, but it's gone. It's gone back now. It keeps changing. But it says e four is the best move because you're gaining space. Uh, so b six. It does. It doesn't like b six. I think white is slightly better. Um, and. I guess the reason it thinks b6 is slightly worse than e4 is, is maybe less. Because white's played a slightly passive opening, um, 
you know, if he thinks you, sh you should play more actively, right? Like, a move like e4 uh, kind of makes that bishop on e2 a little bit problematic. Uh, you know, if you play me like this, then maybe, yeah, c5, and then you're starting to gain a lot of space. The final frontier. But uh, b6, so then suddenly the, they should start to occupy the center. Because at any level, the center is so important, right? Like d4. And um, so, yeah, so, so suddenly they, they play this move, bishop b2, which is a very, bishop c1, which is a very strange move. The bishop's already developed. And then d5 was, yeah, exclamation mark material. It's, and you were, you were... I think we both said that black was better here. We, yeah, and that's uh, so obviously correct. Black is better here. Uh, but he said maybe knight f8 was better. Yeah, with the idea of knight e6 uh, to f4, and then you don't run into you I don't. Think that the play. Yeah, but it's maybe h6 is better. It's, you know, queen d7. So like what you did, right? The taking was actually wrong because if you Why think, I think the reason is that pawn is passive so potentially that pawn could be a weakness when you take that pawn uh, knight you're then resolving that issue for white mm, I don't think of that you know whereas he's saying if you play a calm move like knight 5 you just maneuver around this is what I was saying earlier uh, I think amateur players they find it hard to basically not play something concrete like a capture is a concrete move right like maneuvering around and just playing the position yeah I'm very, not very good with quiet moves yeah so maybe you need to look at that and say, well, yeah, maybe this is where I need to improve is how can I just play the position as it is rather than, you know, you know, this old Russian term called playing by position. So, yeah, knight h5 was nice. If white goes g3, then it just says h6. I said it doesn't look that clear, but it's saying that basically you put the king there, then you push black back, white back, sorry, and you get you gain a lot of space. So you could have a variation like this. Uh, wow, it says the best move is rook a c1. That's crazy. <laughs> so why can't I take the knight? There's some crazy tactic involving this bishop escaping or something. He's saying that actually white is fine now, even though he won a piece. So why can't I move the knight? Because bishop h6 and white is at least equal. That's crazy. Yeah, w would you have seen all this in the game? No, 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 no. So okay, so ninety four, big mistake, right? Uh, understandable mistake, but you lose pretty much all your advantage. And then later on, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Queen G four is where it started turning in their in their favour. And actually, they're almost borderline winning here. They could just push push you back and then come in with a knight. So that it shows what a bad move Queen G4 was. Yeah, Bishop D5 was also a mistake. I, I don't even know what I was thinking. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it, it shows a lack of patience, right? So maybe this is... So we've identified one of the weaknesses where you can improve. One of the areas where you can improve is basically just patience, right? Yeah. You know, maybe just become... Yeah, the, I think, mm. yeah, most of those mistakes stem from lack of patience or... Like, just going based off of intuition while I'm a weaker player and my intuition's sure. not that good. Sure. Yeah, you should. Well, you know, you know where you... You know, a lot of players, I'll be honest, it's already, like, uh, you're getting a head start over over a lot of players because I think a lot of amateur players, uh, they don't know what their weaknesses are and they have no interest in trying to improve it. I so you already, you're already kind of, like, ahead of... Yeah, saying here the best move is Rook D5. Wow. Wow, what a stunning tactic. Because if you take it, so why can't you take on d5, win a rook? Oh, because of queen b1 and queen e1, mate, yeah. Yeah. But that's also like the case, if you'd left the rook there, you would have rook, d, rook d5 anyway. Without. Yeah, I did not see the tactic. I, I yeah, saw it with that yeah. after. But after queen e5, uh, this has gone wrong. And then you're clearly worse, and then you walk into a mate in one. But it would have been, it would have been a hard, hard game to defend anyway. So, okay, so there's clearly areas. Let's move on. Should we move on to the next game? Yeah. Okay, so you this were. Game, this game was sloppy too. But right, the, the next gonna game, you're going to be happy with. It's a good, very good game. Okay, so you play the uh, the perp variation or the modern variation. Yeah, this is like the perp yeah, but variation. I don't know the 
I watched like one YouTube video like mm. last year. Like, whatever. That, that was it. So, okay, quiz question. The Perk Defense, who was that named after? I don't know, some dude named Perts. Yeah, let me look it up actually. Some Russia guy. I'm going to look it up on my phone. I'll cheat. <laughs> uh, using the engine. I'm using the Google engine. Per I think it was named after a Hungarian player, actually. Per I thought it was Russian. No, uh, I don't think it was Russian. Perk Defense. The Perk Defense is a chess opening characterized, but it was named after no Slovenian Grandmaster Vajja Perk, who was born in 1907. Is a strong exponent of the hypermodern defense now generally known as the Perk defense. He was born in Yugoslavia. Um, yeah, so that's quite interesting. Yeah, he died in Slovenia. And yeah, actually, he was born in um, Austria Hungary. Oh, in, wow. So yeah, a long time ago, 1907. It's a town, it's a town in Western Slovenia, funny enough. I think they're playing in the Euro. I just bet on Belgium. As soon as I bet on Belgium, they were like, last time I looked, they were losing to Slovenia. So that's not good for me. All my, all my money's disappeared. So Bishop C4, that's a slightly weird variation of the... It's not a very... I think normally they play the... Uh, nowadays they play more aggressively when a bishop comes out. What do you do if they go F4? Just to test you, what do you play? Against? Bishops. Uh, that, that comes up in my next game. Oh, okay. Cool, year. right. So, okay, so let's have a look. Let's get to where you put the annotations in. So, you're saying G takes F3, Knight H5. So, again, you know, coming back to my broken record thing again, put in variations. Just, that's, you, you, you don't even need to put in text. Just put in variations and yeah. evaluations. So, I think for the next video we do, I want yeah, you to. I'll have that done. You're going to have that down pat. You're going to have evaluations and variations. So knight h5, I quite like that move. Because you maybe you're intending to go e5. No, I didn't even... I, I wasn't even thinking about that. The engine is like screaming that the whole time. Like oh, e, I, e5. I it. E5. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like the next like four positions. Like yeah. The engine is screaming, go e5. Yeah. Yeah, I've, and I think I think again it comes down to experience because I've seen this kind of idea before. Because uh, you say like rook g one, I've seen this kind of move e five before. For me, that's like a really natural move, right? You know, so a lot of chess just comes down to memory and experience. Uh, the, yeah, that looks like a good move. I guess they could take though, right? I mean, if they take, how do you play? Uh, you you take with night no. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah? No, I'm not sure, because yeah, if you, you tell me the knight, they go here, and now they have a direct threat of going f4, which is slightly annoying. No, I just didn't like uh, making it like a bad bishop with taking with the pawn. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you should take with the pawn. I think that's probably the worst. Well, it's not terrible to take with the pawn, but I think that's not the best option. So I would consider taking it with a knight here, or taking back with a bishop. If you take back a bishop, it's also... Possibly the best because they can't go f4, and you maybe you're just going to castle and go queen f6 and start creating counterplay. Also, queen comes to h4 sometimes. A lot of these variations with these pawns here, especially now they've gone rook g1, you attack h3 directly. So I'd say here, I mean, how would you assess the position uh, after e5? How would you assess it? Would you after say here, uh, white? I mean, black's better. You think black, yeah. They just have that, that weakness for the pawns. Yeah, but they do have the bishop pair, so I think objectively maybe slightly unclear. But yeah, I think if anyone's better here, it's definitely black. Maybe slight edge for black, I would say. But queen d7, um, and they went h4. Queen h, yeah, I, queen h3. Yeah, but I didn't calculate any lines before taking, like, I don't know. Okay, yeah, so that comes back to what I was saying earlier. Like, it's always a good idea to calculate, right? Like, even in positions you feel uncomfortable and you don't feel comfortable calculating, it's just a good idea just to calculate anyway. Just just stay in that, because it's so easy to switch out of the whole calculation process. Uh, so, yeah, so... Yeah, so that's something we can take away, and maybe you should need to calculate. But I don't. I guess they're not going to trap your queen that easily, right? Because you can always jump back to h3. 
So they castled, you castled. Okay, yeah, maybe casting was a blunder, right? Did, did you? Yeah. You forgot about the pawn, right? So what would no, have been... No, no, I was thinking that I win his pawn by putting my rook, but, like, doing with a rook mm. is a blunder, because I, I should have put my queen to f6. Well, queen f6 here. Yeah. But can't they uh, jump it with a knight and then put it in this pawn? Isn't that a bit scary? Uh, yeah, it is. I didn't even see that. What a but I was looking like I win a pawn, but whatever, I get fourth. So, what I'm getting from this game is you're quite greedy. Uh, yeah. Have you thought about working on Wall Street? Um, I actually had an internship <laughs> opportunity. I'm, I was going to work yeah. on Wall Street, like, last year. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. How far is that from where you live? Did you have to get the subway or something? Yeah. Was that about 30 minutes, or was it longer? No, it's a, it's a while. It's a while, right? I should go to New York, actually. You know, I always wanted to go to New York. You should. Well, I'll, I'll start singing that song, right? Frank Sinatra classic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might consider me Queen H3 there as well, Jacob, because if you can just come back to D7 and maybe threaten the pawn along the way, it's another option, I guess. I'd be slightly concerned about move F4. They're starting to create some kind of... I mean, another option maybe is just to go... So clearly they got ideas of maybe going bishop g5, trapping your queen, maybe f4. So it's not an not an easy position to play. I mean, maybe even e5 is an option. You know, just yeah, I think the engine says. That's yeah, good. yeah. The engine would always like to move e5. You're right. So bishop takes. So they went check and then bishop g5. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that's really bad. Yeah. So this is going to be wrong. See you later on. I do like a stupid move because I thought I was like for sure lost and there's no way to save it so I did a dumb move hoping they would blunder and they did blunder even though I should never play hope chess yeah but sometimes you know it's a gamble right it's like playing poker right yeah. uh, trying to bet as uh, my best to save my shorty yeah uh, my queen my queen my shorty <laughs> right I was that slang I've never heard that one yeah yeah I was trying to be funny get shorty you'd read it. get shorty right <laughs> okay, cool. So bishop takes, queen takes. Desperate move. I thought I had nothing. Yeah, well, it's it's fine. You know, sometimes you have to be like you have to be realistic and say, well, and and that's the variation that was falsified by Engine right under there. But can you go knight e five and then attack the bishop? Is that yeah? That's move? what I think. Engine's engine set. Oh, that's look, look. That's what. Look at my variation. Ah, oh, right. Rook DG1 and then Knight G4. But they also they can maybe take here, right? Yeah, they could. That's 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 line. Oh, that's the I best think. move, is it? Yeah, because if, if they take here, you actually must be doing very well, right? I yeah, mean, that, that's, what, that's what I calculated. Look, you see? But oh, I didn't calculate right. takes. You see? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, again, like you said, I, false, I, like, I like the fact you're using this word falsified. I, just, I stole it from you. It's a very good term, yeah. It's a very good way to describe the whole calculation process. That you know, where is the mistake in our? You know, we've got to think like, how do you falsify these variations? I stole it from Michael Adams and yeah. uh, Philip Hurtado from their book, right? So I'm always stealing stuff. Yeah, I'm a kleptomaniac, a chess kleptomaniac. So D five, and look at look what he does. <laughs> Ah, he walked into... So, he, I guess he could just take, right? That was the issue, maybe. Yeah, he could have taken, and then I would have resigned. Right, because he's threatening to trap the queen, but, and also I, threatening to win the knight. But I know people, like, my level, like, they hmm. they don't really think they see... They don't like, think like about... The attack queen. They don't think about what their opponent could do. This yeah, is the problem. That's the issue know? I have, also. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. And look, and he blunders again after this. So after d4, yeah, somebody... I mean, probably he could just take, right? And then actually maybe he's doing quite well in this kind of position because... I mean, is he... Is, material's equal now, right? Yeah, I think so. But he's got this pawn clump. He's going to go like f4, e5, and then... Uh, so six pawns against six pawns. And be, I think why... I mean, what do you think about this position? How would you assess this position? Um, their bishop is way better than our knight. Yeah. Well, we have control of the file. They have isolated pawns, so, so okay. Equal to me. 
You think it's easy? I, I disagree, I must admit. I think white is clearly better. Maybe yeah. even winning. Okay. It could winning, be. winning might be an That's exaggeration. Like well, just because I'd be very concerned about this pawn clump. Like, if they get F... I mean, okay, but this... Also, concretely, I have to deal with this threat of maybe Bishop H5, so I have to go here. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be angry because I think that's, like, a, a really nice bishop. No? But compared to the variation earlier, when you've got the uh, the queen trapped, it's, it's a huge improvement, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, it's... Yeah, so they blundered this. And could they not take on D8? I don't know. And then just take oh, back? No, but you hit him with a check. You hit him with a check with the pawn. Yeah, but this is check, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm bugging. And then take there. Is that not better for white, no? Well, I guess I guess you could do this, and then go knight f4. You hit the rook, and then you start pushing the h pawn. Actually, not so clear, right? Because this knight is suddenly... You know, if you can reinforce that knight with e5, these rooks might look a bit shit. So, should we have a quick look and see what the engine said about all that stuff? Yeah. It probably will not... It will not uh, think well of some of the moves, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, it says E5. You said black was better? I was... Yeah, it, it, the engine was screaming to go E5 the whole time. Mm, exactly, but the, actually the engine still thinks, objectively speaking, white is better, probably because of the bishop pair. The bishop pair is so huge in chess, but instead you went queen d7. Yeah, and this is where they should go f4, and actually your extra pawn after this. Wow, it says bishop f1. Who the fuck is going to find bishop f1? <laughs> I mean, that's such a crazy move. And then just go back to e2. And then after this, basically they're just get, they're getting huge initiative now. You know, they could even maybe bring this pawn in. The fact but you're that it's equal. Yeah. I mean, you're pulling up here, right? So that's worth something, you know, in the long term. Uh, oh, it says d5 now. So you switch to d5 and then just go queen d2 and scary initiative for white. Because you, to be honest, this kind of position, uh, even though you're pulling up, it's actually hard for you to do much because if you start breaking out, you start trying to open up the position, they're probably going to put the bishop on f3 later on and you're going to go e6 or c6, but... Yeah, they have a lot of control. And where do you go with your king? If you go here, well, clearly with a with a G file open, the H file open, that's going to be quite dangerous. So, yeah, I, I, I I'm not sure about this, Jacob. Yeah, this looks a bit scary. But they started going horribly wrong. Actually, taking yeah, the pawn was wrong as well. Look, you see, it still wanted me to go E5. Yeah, exactly. E5. Don't take the pawn. Yeah, it's like even here, E5 is better. Yeah. Yeah, look, they're up too. Yeah, it's. I think taking a pawn is wrong because it's basically. A, 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 it's not really an important pawn. It's not really helping your position, right? It's just. It's more about the fact that they've got leading development. And after e5, if you take. Let's say knight takes. Uh, now you come back, and then they've got all these ideas of going f4, they've got a big initiative. It's, it's quite... Wow, 97, the best move is E5. That's insane. Who the fuck is going to find E5, yeah? Sorry about my swearing, kids. <laughs> Why is E5 a good move? Would you play E5 in the game, Jacob? I, I don't know. Probably not. So why can't I just... I guess if they take... He wants to maybe go 95 and then... Or what? I don't quite understand. Oh, maybe F4 it wants. Yeah, f4 and then knight d5 and then basically I'm just getting smashed. And he says after this I don't have time to read a rook because you just come back. It, wow, it's amazing that white's winning here. White is just simply winning. It looks, I mean, you know, first it looks a little bit unclear but there's all these threats of rook h1, take the knight. Uh, also the queen is a little bit trapped now. So this is just a huge edge for white, yeah. It's tough to see, but okay, black castled. Yeah, I thought he just blundered the pawn. Uh, yeah, and then... I got so excited and fixated on that idea. So you win queen h2, and then uh, queen g2, bishop g4. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, this is getting bad, bro. Oh, uh, right, it says the best move is rook takes f3. <laughs> yeah, I 
I saw that when I was doing that. Yeah, just because it's so important not to get the queen trapped. That's the most important element in the position. Uh, but bishop e3 and then uh, d5 is a blunder. Yeah, knight f4 is the best try, yeah. What was knight f... Oh, wow, it says here and then go h5. That's insane, right? Because the idea is you take, you take with a knight and then take on g4. Yeah, you, yeah I saw that. After. And it says the best move is bishop f5. Yeah, some of this computer analysis is very hard to understand because, you know, it's like, um, but it does help you. I mean, think it can benefit you, you, your chess as well because you start to see what it does is open up, open up your idea, open up your mind to different kind of weird ideas, right? Okay, so let's quickly uh, have a look at the end. So D5, so yeah, they blundered. Uh, they should have just taken, it would have been the end of the game. And then, uh, yeah, taking here is no good either, right? Because in fact, in fact, here it says black is actually winning. Wow. Because this bishop is so bad. And I thought the bishop was, yeah. It's just like crushing position for black because the knight's coming in and these rooks are just terrible. So okay, so there was like mixed uh, feelings about that game, but you won that game. That's good. Let's have a look at the next game. Right. And then, yeah, uh, so this next game you again played the perk. So have you always played the perk, or is it just something you... Yeah, I played the, the perk. I just mm. do, like, not, like, these, like, King Indian looking setups. Like, I don't really know theory, because mm. yeah. I, I feel like, like, my openings are not really holding me back that much, and, like, once, like, I start mm. running into issues in the openings, then it's worth it for me to start studying. Because I remember, like, I asked you about different yeah. openings I should, like, yeah. look into. I can't remember how I responded. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe yeah. Sicilian was Sicilian yeah, was a yeah, good idea. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or even just go e4, e5, because I think you need to learn uh, about positional chess. Oh yeah, when I go e4, e5, a lot of the times, like I'm in their theory and their traps, and I get really messed up. Like here, it's, it's maybe the French is. I've been looking at the French. The French is actually quite a good opening, actually. Yeah. That's what my my friend Sebia plays. He plays the French a lot. Mm, I think the French is an underrated opening. Actually, it's quite interesting strategically speaking. Victor Kortschnoy used to play the French. He used to play that very well. So. So okay, D four nine f six. Uh, so, yeah, so they played the Austrian Remember, attack. I I told you the the other time that he played mm. like this, and you asked me where I go. Yeah, exactly. The last game. The, the last game, right? Yeah. yeah so you went bishop d seven, and so it's called the Austrian attack, uh, which is interesting because we've already Sergey Karyakin played this. Yeah, yeah. So we, it's interesting because we learned already that. Perk was actually from Slovenia, or it was he was, was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which I believe was uh, the ha ha the Habsburgs or the Haps is it the Habsburgs were I think that was the family associated with the it was like the Romanovs were associated with the uh, the Russian Empire, the Habs Habsburgs I think they're also in Spain as well. Uh, maybe a Spanish family originally, but anyway. So again, I'm more interested in history than I'm in chess, as you can probably tell. <laughs> I think knight f3 is more natural there. And then, what would you do after knight f3? I'm just going to test you. Uh, knight f3. Yeah. I'd pin it probably. All right, pin it to win it. Yeah, actually, that's quite a reasonable move, actually. Um, so because I... a lot of these positions, like my light square bishop, like doesn't really do anything unless like I feed Kodo feed Kato it, but like mm. the edge doesn't really like it usually. I think I think the main line is actually uh, castles. And now White can go for this White can go for this very scary idea of playing this and then just playing ultra aggressively. And I believe after C five you go H five, you even just keep going. Wow. And again I'm not sure about the theory a here. Tension. There's a lot of tension. There's also another very interesting line I once analysed for a chess base article. And it starts with bishop d3, Jacob, and black goes knight a6. And when white castles, you go c5. So the idea is this knight can actually rejoin a game via b4. It's quite an interesting line, this. And uh, so the main line, I believe, is d5. 
and then you uh, maybe you can even go rookie eight there or bishop g4 is another line uh, but if they if they uh, in the last move if they take here what would you play after bishop a6 just to test you if they took yeah am I missing something why would they take back well, you can take that, but I believe I could be wrong about this. But I believe you can actually even take here. You can yeah. intermezzo. This is actually supposed to be the best move, I think. Just take oh, intermezzo, wow. because if they take uh, with a knight, then you take. Now this is not a thing because of queen v6 check. Oh, wow. So if they go, uh, let's say they went, they did cheeky move like this, and then took with a uh, took with a queen. What would you play? Again, another little test. Um, Black to well, play. Black to play and get a clearly better, maybe even borderline winning position. Mm. Oh, you. Oh, because I didn't see the bishop. Uh, mm. Knight e4. Yeah, knight e4, very nice idea, yeah, because it basically exploiting this lack of coordination and queen is getting attacked by the bishop. So. This would be a beautiful position for black. So quite a nice little trap. Nice little trap. So I think this line with knight a6, I, I would give it a look, you know, just if you have the time to study it, you know, it's quite an interesting variation. But uh, but that didn't happen because they very, yeah, playing e5 this early without a knight on f3 doesn't look right to me. So you took, which looks, you could also have gone knight d7. Go back to the, I haven't taken that. Look, oh, right. like, like I wasn't sure if I did the right move. Oh, okay. Where, where was your annotation? I wanted to stay like a little bit active, but like going mm. uh, d7, I think was better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, knight d7 is probably the push uh, c5. Yeah, exactly. Because they're kind of uh, and the fact you haven't castled here me makes their h4 h5 plan maybe less effective. If they started playing h4, that doesn't look right here. You, then you would go c5, and you'd have a very good position. So, uh, this, yeah, it's. Possibly in this line, maybe Black should delay castling if they can, if they can get away with it, because uh, you know this whole H four H five plan with you know associated with, with E five is quite dangerous. So okay, so you took it doesn't look that bad. And you went ninety five, which looks very natural. So, uh, but here you went Bishop E six, which I'd yeah. Why not just take take here, right? No, because I, I feel like. I want to develop, right? And also, like, I don't want to, mm. like, give up, like, my, my nice place piece. Because, like, I feel like my piece was way mm. more active than his. I'd like him to release the tension. Yeah, but sometimes I think amateur players underestimate uh, the, uh, you know. So I was saying earlier that sometimes they always try to do something. But I think, I think here you, you're forced to do something, right? You have to you have to meet the... But yeah, so I, I like... Putting my bishop there because I develop and I defend. Okay, it's not a terrible move, but I would at least give this as an. If I was annotating the game, I'd at least give this as an alternative. Yeah. And uh, then after B takes, but how would you play this position? It's black to play. How would you play this position? Black to play. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying I, I agree with you. It's not that clear, right? I mean, okay. Firstly, how would you assess this position? So we always talk about assessments, evaluations. Because everybody, I mean, I know I talk about these evaluations a lot, but everybody does subconsciously, um, I, I think, you know, evaluate positions. Yeah, but I think the king is extremely weak. It's what the, super weak for the white. black. Oh, for white, right? Yeah, right. but mm. but I don't like how how it basically like blocks out our our dark square bishop. Right. And they just have so much control of the center. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's really hard to like, like, to attack his pawn chain. You see, I stop you there because it was again one of the differences I think between professional players and amateur players is you're talking a lot about the specific features of position, but you're not doing it in a way that some amateur players do, which is to waffle a lot. But you are, but but what I would say is the difference is that professional players would probably give a lot of variation, so they. I would go like c5, knight f3, cd, cd, queen a5, check, bishop d2. You know, whether that's good or bad, right? Yeah, but I, like, mm. I don't know. It's more simple for me to do ideas since, like... Yeah, I true. 
Because maybe you're not comfortable with uh, analyzing variations, right? Yeah, and notation is not like like yeah, something yeah, I still yeah. have to work on since I, I started okay. chess later in life. Yeah, so, oh wow, so they blundered horribly here, right? Because Knight of Three is a horrible blunder, right? So they need to. So some move like. I'm so happy that I saw that. <laughs> okay, so that would give us a double question mark after Knight of Three. If you're annotating a game, you give that as a double question mark. Um. Okay, now this is dead lost, so I don't know if it's worth looking at after that. But I just want to show you, I, I just liked it, look. Oh, yeah, Queen D5, very nice move, yeah. Oh, they resigned here, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. So let's quickly look at the uh, what the computer says about that game. It actually preferred uh, Knight, uh, what was it, D7? Yeah, you're right, yeah, Knight D7 is better, yeah. It's a, it's a great game by Mikhail Gurevich. I actually played him in the book uh, years ago in the tournament in Capel. Was there anybody who played, um, like, takes and... And D D five, yeah, I think so. I think it's been played. I don't. I mean, I think Jacob that uh, a lot of positions. You know, it's not necessary that you only have one option, right? Like I would say here, because this is slightly obscure variation to go E five so early, it's probable that you got more than one good way of playing. And I think this is also perfectly reasonable. It's not a bad way to play at all. In fact, it, weirdly, they're saying the best option for white is to take the d pawn, which is hard hard to commit to because your king there doesn't look great on d1 because it's it's quite a lot of pieces still on the board. But I guess there's probably issues with knight d5 coming, you know, which also could cause an issue for black. So yeah, not so clear. But they took with the f pawn. Now you're completely fine. Saying the best move is knight e4, weirdly. That's a tough move to find. Bishop c4. But your bishop e6 is better than my knight c3. But knight c3 is also fine for black as well, yeah. And then you basically c5, yeah. It's all just equal. But uh, bishop e6, uh, yeah, it was just a terrible blunder. So it's not really worth looking at the game after that. But yeah, so what... What do you think you... So I think for the next one, Jacob, what I'd like to see you do, don't analyse it with an engine. And then maybe just go... Just do your own annotations, but I want to see more variations, right? Mm -hmm. So we could see that as potentially improvement for the next... Could you do next week? Maybe. Yeah. Let's do I another do session collect, next week, right? Like three games. Yeah. You have to send me that cheque for $500, right? For... I and thought it was an hour's oh, that's, coaching. That's a, that's a steal. I thought it was two <laughs> two thousand dollars. Actually, there are some people who do charge that card, but they're probably super GMs. But um, yeah, there is a lot of uh, coaching online. People coach a lot online, and uh, uh, but it's just like uh, I mean, I prefer coaching face to face, but there is a lot of convenience to coaching online actually because. Uh, you know, you don't have to travel, you don't have to, um, you can do it whenever it suits you. You know, you don't have to see the person, which, <laughs> which is which is always a benefit. But, no, I mean, I enjoy that, Jacob. So, yeah, we're doing something again next week, mate, yeah? Yeah, sounds good. All right, uh, so. Good session. Okay, I'll stop the call.